to zero. Next is our superintendent's report. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, uh, members of the board. Uh, as uh, 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 Ms. Uh, Watson mentioned uh, at the uh, beginning, we uh, concluded another school year this past uh, a week with uh, graduations being on uh, Thursday. Uh, I've been attending graduations for many, many years, and uh, I would tell you these, this year was, I thought, uh, as fine a set of graduations as I have ever uh, seen or participated in. I was uh, very, very, very uh, proud of our students and our, uh, our parents, and very impressed with the accomplishments of our students. Uh, as has been mentioned, our scholarship totals are approaching $120 million, which is just, uh, uh, just almost uh, unbelievable. It is so great, and we're so proud of them. And I was thinking back to, uh, since the crowd is so small, I might just confess this. Uh, I was uh, thinking back to my own high school experience. Of course, I went to a very small high school in the rural uh, Midwest, and uh, the scholarship total for my class was $720. I know that was because uh, it was me who got it, and then uh, I, uh, that was a four-year scholarship, and I didn't maintain the necessary GPA, so I lost it after the first year. So it ended up being only worth $180, but uh, uh, so uh, I'm indeed odd to be here where people have such phenomenal success. Um, I also, I think uh, I'm very proud of our graduations because they, our, our schools tell their stories and it reminds us of the importance, not only of the work we do, but the importance of our schools and our communities. And uh, this year, for example, we were reminded of the fact that uh, Irmo High is uh, celebrating its uh, 50th year in its present building and it's 80-something it's year of, of uh, producing graduates. I've forgotten the exact number. And Chapin High is actually, uh, this was their 90th uh, graduating class from Chapin High, which I thought was uh, very, very significant. And again, we're very, very um, proud of all of our students. And then the question we always get this time of year is what happens uh, in the summer? Well, it looks like a, a few people are probably, have probably gone to the beach uh, this week, but uh, not our not our employees, but our our, our graduates and their their families and our students. But please know that uh, we have people working year round to make sure that we'll be fully staffed uh, when school resumes uh, in August, and that our teachers and staff members get the professional development that they need uh, during the summer months, and that our facilities uh, get the thorough cleaning and the attention to detail that they need in order to be at their tip-top shape when our students and teachers return uh, in August. And so while we're on the topic uh, of facilities, we will now go to our uh, report from our Office of Design and Construction, um, uh, Mr. Whitley from our construction management firm, and uh, Mr. McAllister, who's our Director of Design and Construction. We have Mr. Whitley here tonight to give the Thank you, Mr. McAllister, uh, Dr. Hefner, members of the board again. Great honor to be here uh, before you again tonight um, to give you a monthly update. Um, one quick note, the aerials that you'll see with each project are updated in the presentation here from the ones you had. I got them after we, after we sent that over to you. Um, once again, um, this is probably the fourth or fifth summer that I've stood before you about this time and of course this is our busiest time of the year particularly on on the schools that um, that where we have students in typically so and on the renovation projects so it's, it's a very busy time for us to say the least uh, we'll start with Chapin Chapin right now our main push is to um, complete this gymnasium the new gymnasium um, we're currently working uh, installing finishes completing the mechanical systems. The mechanical systems in the gym are now running so we can start conditioning our floors um, to, to install the wood floors there. Um, and another big push along with that completion of the gym will be um, working up in the existing building in what is currently the old, the old gym um, that, that will convert to a cafeteria and kitchen. So we're kind of on all sides of campus this summer. Um, 
as you guys know, school school let out last week, and um, the contractor made a big push in in demolition over the weekend and made some good progress. Um, so um, we're going to continue to monitor them and, and push forward at Chapin. One other quick note, the parking lot behind the new gym is also uh, being installed now. We have the stone down and, and should be paving shortly. Mr. Whitley, I don't know if you said this or not. Did you say what the expected completion date? Could you talk about the areas just we're, to update everybody? Yes, ma'am. We're looking for mid-July to, to turn over the new gymnasium. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, the other areas that will be occupied when school gets back, those will be pushed towards the end of um, middle of August, I guess. It'll, it'll be much like last summer when we had the renovation project within the existing building. Um, we'll be in that kit, the new kitchen area trying to get all of that stuff complete uh, prior to an August kids coming back to school. And, and then what part is um, will be finished in December? The balance of it, um, which would be con going in and renovating the existing cafeteria, the cafeteria as it exists now in that kitchen area. So the second semester that our Chapin students will come back to a... We should be 100% complete. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to... Dutch Fork. Uh, Dutch Fork, we have turned over the health science building. Um, we're continuing to work on the, we have the soccer field very close to grade, so we're going to be installing the, the sprinkler system um, at the soccer field and getting it fine graded and, and ready to be utilized next year. Um, the big push now again is now that the, the kids are out. We actually got in there earlier and, and have been working, but this kind of frees us up to do some of the louder type of work. Um, in the renovation area that we have to complete this summer. So, um, again, that, that project will push up 1st of August, mid-August in that time frame, and, and we should be walking away from, from Dutch Fork completely. Okay, moving on to Irmo. Um, Irmo High, ton of work going on there. The Kate uh, the Cape building will be renovated this summer. We actually, um, with the help of the staff there, able to figure out some ways to take some of the areas early, actually before school got out, which was a big help to the contractors. Um, so we've already started that renovation uh, of the Cape Center. Um, and at the same time, we're going to be working um, at the auditorium. Uh, trying to complete it along with the connectors that ultimately across the front of the auditorium tie the building that whole the whole campus becomes tied together once those are completed so we're working towards uh, getting those put in this summer that was just something that we couldn't do until school was out so it's going to be a big push for the contractors particularly on on that connecting piece to get get that work accomplished over the summer but that's that is the goal so, so the goal that goal date is right before school starts then that that is what we're pushing for yes ma'am and then the, how about for the um auditorium the auditorium honestly the the latest schedule i have from the contractor shows about a mid-september completion but we're we're working with them and and are in discussions with them and have been in discussions with them about accelerating that to try to hit that start date of school that that's that's the goal um, but, but there were, as you guys will remember, a long way, long time ago in that area, some unsuitable soils and that sort of thing that, that kind of delayed that, that starting of that auditorium, which, which is um, something that we've, we've been trying to gain that ground back as we've gone along. All right, thanks. Mr. Turner. Mr. Whitley, this may, uh, or Mr. McAllister, uh, there's been some community interest in signage out front of Irmo High School. Um, do you know where that stands as to the resolution of, of what's going to be acceptable and, and when a decision will be made on that? Or is that something that... Last, the, the last I heard, it, it was not... They, the town was not going to let the sign be installed at... Are you talking about out at the road? Yeah, I, I heard... No, no, county. county, I'm sorry. The, the county um, rejected the sign that was to be installed there because of height issues. So will there be a redesign done? You wanna? 
I think right now we're exploring uh, and having some conversations with the town of Irmo about being annexed into the town of Irmo since their, their uh, requirements are a little less stringent than Lexington County. Lexington County has us zoned as a residential area and, and so that, that created some problems. Uh, but I think uh, that in some discussions the other day in a meeting, we're going to check into town of Irmo being annexed into town of Irmo, and I think that may help us with some of that. Mr. McAllister, it's been a while since we've seen that sign. Can you, um, and maybe um, Ms. Loveless being the, the newest member, not so new anymore, but I don't know if you've seen it. Can you make sure that we um, we see that design? Yes, ma'am. Actually, the the sign that was originally designed was uh, a little over 35 feet high, I think, and that and and that that's above and beyond what the county or the city or the town will accept. And I think right now they're working on something that scales it down to about 25 feet. I think that that's the last discussions we had. But uh, Stevens and Wilkins is supposed to be bringing us something. Okay, and, and we do want to see that before anything is yes, done. Well, that. actually, I think that, that you they, they want you to see it. They want SIC to see it okay. and the principal and, and get, get, get a lot of blessings before we go any further. All right. Yeah, I know the whole board would like to see it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Finally, the new middle school. Um, work is progressing extremely well. We've been blessed with great weather the last couple months, which... I hadn't always been able to stand in front of you guys and say, but but when we have great weather, it's, it's, it's the, the the work progresses at a much better rate. Um, the the grading on site is is going good. About 85% of the storm drainage is in. Most of the water and sewer lines are in and are being tested. Um, and our building contractors accepted the building pad and they started foundations. They're probably about 90% complete in the main kitchen, mechanical, and electrical rooms. We like to try to build particularly schools this size from, from those areas because that's where the, the bulk of the work is and what feeds everything else. So um, work's progressing really well there and um, look forward to an August of 2015 opening there. Any questions about the middle school? I don't know if we've had a meeting since our groundbreaking. I don't, I don't think so. That went very well. Thank you for those who organized it. It was very exciting. Um, last one in the bond referendum so very exciting thank you so much thank you thank you and our uh, next uh, presentation is from our office of instruction and uh, for uh, the uh, background information there i'll yield to uh, dr milton our chief instruction officer Thank you, Dr. Hefner. Madam Chair, board members, tonight I'd like to introduce Mr. Reggie Dean, our Director of Secondary, for being here tonight. And our presenter this evening is Karen Falaw from Spring Hill High School. We felt that Ms. Falaw was a perfect person to present the individualized graduation plans information to you because she's been counselor both at Chapin Middle School and now currently at Spring Hill High School. Please understand this presentation could last at least an hour. So Ms. Falah has focused very carefully on the essential information that we would like to share this evening with two objectives, which you can find at your, your place this evening. You have copies of this presentation for your notes, and of course, for any reference that you would like to make later. But I'd like to thank Ms. Falah for being here and also thank her for her preparation. She has certainly had a long day today, but has willingly come tonight because she's very passionate about this pursuit of um, individualized graduation plans and her responsibilities as counselor here in School District 5. Thank you so much, Dr. Hefner, Madam Chair, and board members for this chance to really talk to you about the career component of our district guidance program. Tonight we're going to look at specifically the EDA and its impact of career counseling in our public schools, as well as what is an individual graduation plan, and I'm going to give you a snapshot of what that IGP looks like in District 5. In 2005, the Education and Economic Development Act otherwise known as the EDA, was signed into law. This comprehensive law was designed to give our South Carolina students the educational tools they need to build prosperous, successful futures. One of the main requirements is that we're going to inject K-12 through career focus, more career counseling for all of our students, with the goal being that we're going to prepare them for the next steps. 
The high schools are challenged with creating a high school curriculum that's going to better prepare our students not only for those next steps, if, whether that's post-secondary, but also 21st century careers. Our curriculum is going to be based on the 16 career clusters, and even though these career clusters are statewide clusters, what District 5 does is we really tailor our majors for our students' needs, looking at things like career trends, such as the surge in STEM careers, so that's a, a big component that we look at. One of the main things that was born out of this law was the individual graduation plan, otherwise known as IGP. We're going to spend most of our time tonight really looking at that. What this IGP is, it is a student-specific educational plan that's going to detail the coursework that they need, not only for graduation, but again for those next steps. Those next steps may be the military, it may be the workforce, it may be post-secondary education. The IGP is a live document that we create beginning in eighth grade year and is updated each year until the student graduates. One of the main focus that I like to point out about this IGP is it's fluid, it's ever changing as the student's needs and aspirations change. Now, some myths that we have to dispel to that eighth grade parent is, no, I do not expect your eighth grader to know what they want to do for the rest of their lives. I bet there are adults in this room who don't know what they want to be when they grow up either. So it's okay if that eighth grader hasn't, you know, locked into that career path. Also, once the student makes that initial decision, again, they are not locked in. As their interests change, the IGP changes with that student. Now, even though they're making this decision in eighth grade, they're choosing a school of study and a cluster of study, as you can see by the chart, the career process begins in kindergarten. In elementary school, the focus really is career awareness. So throughout the curriculum in elementary school, that student's been exposed to many, many, many different types of careers, and specifically looking at non-traditional gender roles and things like that, really opening up that student's mind. In middle school, when that eighth grader sits in front of us with the parent and the counselor and we're making those decisions, that student has done various career assessments, interest inventories, based on how they answer the questions on the interest inventories, they're categorized in one or multiple ones of the 16 career clusters, they've job shadows, they've participated in career fairs, and one thing that we've really added the past couple of years that's really exciting is all the eighth graders get the opportunity to tour the center here. And so each teacher presents their program to the student and it really brings it to life for them. They come back from the center and all of them want to take a class at the center. So, that, so the student has had all of those different career components before they make that decision. And then high school, it's all about career prep. Again, getting that student to the next level. This is a very broad snapshot of what the high school IGP looks like. I could probably fill up three slides with the IGP, so I just tried to highlight some of the main components. If you look across the top column, we're going to look at in the ninth grade IGP, the student's going to choose a cluster of study or a major. Tenth grade IGP, the main focus is declaring that major if the student hasn't already done so. 11th grade IGP, we're going to review and update that IGP as necessary. And then 12th grade year, we're going to complete that IGP. Now that IGP obviously is going to include graduating from high school, that's our ultimate goal, completing any college requirements, and then hopefully that student is going to complete a major as well. So that's a main component. The 10th through 12th grade year, one of the main things that we focus on are extended learning opportunities. And, and just to define that, that's opportunities outside the traditional classroom. So those would be things like internships, career shadowing, community service, apprenticeships, independent research, senior projects, et cetera. That takes what they learn in the classroom and places them into those real world experiences. The ninth grade IGP is truly the IGP that you spend the most time on because this is the time that you really introduce that ninth grader to all the majors that District 5 has to offer. We're going to highlight the ones that are on our individual campuses, but then we're also going to really talk to them about the Center for Advanced and Technical Studies because many of our students across our four high schools are going to attend classes here. 
Some of the things to highlight is a lot of the center classes that are two-year programs, some of them are three-year programs. So again, we want to make sure that ninth grader knows so we can prepare their high school curriculum around that. The center majors are for all levels of students. They even have honors waiting in some of their classes. It's not the career center that I grew up with where you fixed a car, sewed a pillow, or built something. Our career, career center just has a plethora of majors that our students can pursue. And a lot of our students will actually leave with certifications or sometimes college credit through the Project Lead the Way. This is, oops, sorry. This is just a very visual snapshot of all of the majors that we offer in District 5. It's a little overwhelming to look at the slide, but it's exciting that our students, including the three Falaw children, have the opportunity to just experience so many different majors and careers that we have out there. An important thing just to note that as our students need changes, we will update uh, under Dr. Couch's tutelage, and we will um, change majors and tweak them as necessary and add majors as our students' needs change. This is just really to show you that although completing that major is important, the primary goal of the IGP is we want every student to be able to graduate from District 5 with a diploma. The next step that we're going to look at is, is that student interested in post-secondary education? There are additional four-year college requirements that that student may need to complete, so that's something else we have to look at, with the tertiary goal being completing that major. We have many, many, many students who complete at least one major in District 5. We may have the occasional student who does not, but the overall experience is great for our students. Some of them leave with a passion and a focus area for college, and others leave knowing that they hate something, and that's just as valuable for our students. Saves money for us parents, too, so they don't change their majors 500 times in college, like my son at Clemson right now. Um, the IGP, we really need to look at it as it's a roadmap for our students. It's ever-changing. It guides the students towards their educational and career goals. But the thing I really want to highlight again is the flexibility. This plan can change over time as our students' interests change. And just to recap, we've reviewed the EDA very briefly. Um, we've defined the IGP, we've highlighted the process of creating the student IGP, and I've included in the last slide just some really important links if you want to do further research. All of the guidelines spelled out in the EDA are actually in the first link, and it covers all that, because there's actually four key components of the EDA encompasses, but again, it's that K through 12 career focus. I love the second link, personal pathways, that is actually part of the State Department of Education. There's information on there, not only for counselors, but for parents, for students, for adults, and for businesses. And you can look at the 16 career clusters the IGP process, um, partnering with businesses, so a lot of great career information. And the last link is our actual district course catalog that not only outlines all the courses that we offer, but all the majors are listed with all the requirements. So it really gives you a more detailed look at what is required to complete that major. Okay, I've taught really fast. Does Thank anyone you, have Hall. any questions for me? Mr. Turner. I think Ms. Falaw deserves a ruler. <laughs> That's a lot of information. Um, I guess a question is, it, you, you talked about it being very fluid, the whole process, but is there, uh, for the benefit of any parent that might mm -hmm. hear this later, for those children, is, is there a point so that, not that you've gone too far or there's a point of no return, but, but what is a really critical time for the child to really be focused because to change their mind then, I, I know they always can, but, right. but is there a, a sort of a critical point along that process? Now, if you're talking about the critical point for completing a major well, or just a critical point in... Well, if they, if, when they start in the ninth grade and mm -hmm. there are certain things they need to have done by then and in the tenth and, and it moves, and, and you said it changes, it's very fluid, but from the standpoint of his or her ability to, to make sure, and for the guidance mm -hmm. to make sure that, that this child is really focused. What, what are you looking for that if you could 
if, if it were magic, when would you like my crystal that, ball <laughs> that, that child to really be focused and, and, and not to have to change their mind because to do so may create problems for them. Right. Is, uh, that may not be a fair question, but it's, it's what I thought about when you were going through this, this through the whole four years of high school. Well, one thing we are truly beginning ninth grade going to want that student to begin thinking about is are they looking at post-secondary education? Because there are college requirements that have to be fulfilled on top of the graduation requirements. So no, a ninth grader may not need to know I'm definitely going to four-year college, um, but they do need to think about it even as early as ninth grade. Because again, to get in some of those college requirements, it takes the span of the four years. Typically, I am going to assume that my student is going to go into post-secondary education until I'm told otherwise. Because I just want to make sure that I don't close any door for a ninth or tenth grader that we can't reopen, you know, at that point like you're talking about. With regard to a major, if a student's really wanting to be a completer, they really do need to decide by eleventh grade year in order for us to get, now if it's a completer at the center, they actually may need to decide before then. If it's a completer that can occur on our high school campus, just for them to be able to get in those four required courses for major. But, I, but really, when you're talking about adolescents, you know, how many of them truly know what they want to do? But our goal is to give them as many opportunities and again, not close any doors so they can't go down their various paths. Well, Mr. Law, thank you very much. I agree, Mr. Turner. You certainly deserve a golden ruler. And I have to say thank you to Dr. Couch as well. The failure to launch conference certainly brought a renewed interest to IGP. So we appreciate the opportunity to share this. And as I share on the onset, this could have been an hour-long presentation. So you were very thoughtful and intentional in your preparation, and we appreciate that very much, Ms. Law. Thank you so much. Mr. Law. Thank you so much, Ms. Flaw. That was a great job. Yes. Um, again, I would uh, add my words of appreciation. And I, I think our folks do an exceptional job of trying to make our students aware of all the, uh, of the multiplicity of opportunities they have here in the district. But again, we're always looking for every way to, that we can to get information to our students uh, to help generate their interest, uh, to spark the interest in their parents. And um, um, so I think we're working, you know, our, our people, I think our people do an exceptional job with that. I did uh, uh, want to mention that uh, congratulations are in order to a number of our people. I'll just mention a couple that we can talk about at this point in time with more to come. But uh, we want to congratulate um, Dr. Melton as uh, she's been elected to serve as president of the board of the South Carolina Association of School Administrators for 2014-2015. Uh, Congratulations, <laughs> Dr. Melvin. And she's just ending her term as chair of the board of Advanced Ed here in South Carolina. So uh, held, uh, is holding some very, uh, very, very uh, important statewide uh, positions in our profession. Also, want to congratulate uh, Sarah Wheeler, who is our director of magnet uh, of the magnet grant that we have, who has just been elected uh, president-elect of the board of the Magnet Schools of America, which is a huge and significant p position. And we congratulate her. And uh, to Gina Mays, who is our assistant principal at Al uh, Ballantyne Elementary School. She has recently been elected president of the South Carolina chapter of the International Reading Association. So we congratulate Ms. Mays. And we have, we well, just are so blessed to have wonderful uh, people who are recognized all across our state as leaders in our profession. We appreciate it. That concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hefner. And, um, and the others for the, the reports. Very good. Next is public participation. Uh, first.